Hey everyone, it's BDC. Thanks for uh, checking out this video on my channel. Today I am doing a preview of an SV that I built, a small vessel for Imperion, um, as my response to Excalibur's Designers Challenge for 2000, or excuse me, for February 2019. And um, basically the challenge is build a small vessel that is also a cargo hauler and uh, uh, something that comports with uh, A9's. Um, Alpha 9's weights and volumes um, thing that they put in. So uh, basically, in uh, in uh, short, um, it's something that uh, that uh, requires having to be able to haul heavy cargo. Um, the previous builds of Imperion, uh, for those that may be unfamiliar with it, uh, you didn't have to uh, do anything like that, and you didn't have to deal with logistics and in the weights of stuff that you carried. Um, it was more of an old school type of inventory um, and cargo system that was based on slots. And so a lot of the vessels and bases that were built would, would have rows and rows of cargo boxes and they'd have you know, what are those 32 or 64 slots or I can't remember off the top of my head. And so it was just a matter of stacking those things up. The more boxes you had, uh, the better off you were. Well, and the new, uh, I think it's Alpha 9.3. Um, uh, the Alpha 9.3 um, release, uh, the system changed, um, although it is currently still an elective. I suspect that it may become a permanent thing at some point. Uh, the system changed over to something called weights and volumes. Uh, I call it weights and frustrations, but I actually kind of like it. Um, uh, basically, the cargo change is something where the different types of cargo boxes have a certain volumetric um, like uh, total capacity to them. Uh, same for your person as well. So right now I'm in God mode, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. I can carry a million tons of whatever. It wouldn't make any difference. But for instance, on my uh, player, if you look on the bottom left, you'll see a volume number, and it shows a total of 500. And in this case, it's because I'm not wearing an outfit. Uh, I'm not wearing uh, armor or whatever. Um, the different armors, I think they're they're 600 for light, 650 for medium, and then 800 for heavy. Um, but anyway, um, all this applies to uh, ships and cargo uh, boxes and bases and all that sort of thing too. So let's see, just to give you an idea, I will grab a container controller and yeah, I hear that critter over there. Uh, let's see, one for a base. Let's see, what do we got here? All right. I'll throw one of these things down real fast just as a test. I'll get rid of it in a second. Okay, this thing has a volume of 8,000. So I could cram a lot of stuff in there, uh, just as an example. Um, but you can fill up uh, an 8,000 volume container. Now, the way that... Um, or one of the ways that they uh, that they enhanced this, uh, I should say, is with the use of container extensions. So say you have a large base and you have, let's say, a whole lot of smelted uh, ingots, uh, iron, copper, and all that. That stuff can get pretty wa uh, weighty, especially like satium, really heavy stuff, promethium ore. So you have a lot of that stuff, and um, you don't have the volume to support it. So what you do is, is you lay one of those container uh, controllers down, and then you use these cargo extensions on it. And you basically build your cargo space. So with those three extensions plus the uh, container controller, I now have 32,000 volume in this cargo, whatever you want to call it. So anywho, um, the same rules apply for HVs and SVs. Uh, it's actually a real challenge for hover vessels because uh, they're nowhere near as powerful as uh, small vessels can be in terms of uh, some of the thruster choices and they can't fly and all that kind of thing. Um, but with respect to the challenge that Excalibur put out, um, basically he is commission or he has commissioned people to do a small vessel that is also a cargo hauler. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are upset with the direction that Imperion's taking with this weights and volumes thing. Um, it's, I have to be honest, I was apprehensive about it at first. I was a little, uh, I was a little put off by it um, because for me it meant that I had to go through and look at all of my vehicles that I have out there and uh, re-update them for the new version. And that was like five days of work or something. I was just, 
I was just at it every day. Uh, and I had to retest everything with weights and, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. But after it's all done, and then also after having played on a couple of multiplayer servers that have the weights and volumes enabled, I actually like it quite a bit. Um, the, the end effect is, uh, I think, twofold, just off the top of my head. One is the survival experience, since this is supposed to be galactic survival and not a crafting game necessarily. It's not Minecraft. Um, the, the survival aspect has really been fleshed out quite a bit by it in that when you're building a base or when you're wanting to lay stuff down, you have to be much more mindful about the amount of parts and stuff that you carry with you, the things that you loot at POIs, all that kind of stuff like that. Um, I really, really, really actually like that quite a bit because I like the challenge of survival, especially in solo. So now what I have to do when I play, if I want to do a constructor, that's 600 volume. That's as much as your guy can carry in light armor. I think it's more than this guy can carry right now. I wouldn't be able to even grab that block and then place it down. I'd have to have light armor on. Um, so... Like I have to use an uh, excuse me a uh, an HV I can use as uh, logistics support to go loot stuff. I have to make sure that it has some some uh, cargo uh, volume capacity in it when I go and grab stuff. Uh, you can't just basically carry around an entire base full of crap in your inventory anymore. You know, there's no more carrying around uh, 3,000 blocks of armored concrete and you know, and 1,000 blocks of hardened steel or whatever. You can't do that kind of thing anymore. So you have to be a lot more mindful about it and. It makes you, it forces you to be more picky and choosy in how you do all the logistics and moving stuff around and how you play. And I really like that quite a bit. I really, really do. It adds a, a challenge uh, to the game that I think was lacking. The second thing that I like about it is, is it opens up the possibility of doing cargo transports like this. I mean, I never thought I'd make a, uh, a hauler vehicle. Uh, that's not something I was thinking about doing. Um, there was just no need for it. I had uh, already had an SV, a couple SVs that were designed that had multiple cargo boxes. And since everything was done back then with slots, it didn't really matter. It was just, hey, I had two or three boxes on there. Big freaking deal. Uh, but now there's the challenge of the, the weights and volumes thing. And so it really puts, um, how, how should I word this? It puts a lot of emphasis on how you build a ship now. Uh, how do you do uh, power generation, gyros, the RCS, uh, thrusters and thruster distribution? Where do you place the, the cargo boxes? Because it'll affect how the, uh, the ship flies. It's kind of like it's more in the direction of Space Engineers, which is a, a game I really, really like. So... I think overall it's going to be a positive change. I know it's going to turn some people off initially, but you know, I mean, it, it's for those that are that are willing to take the challenge up and stick around. I, I think they'll appreciate the opportunities that it uh, opens up. So anyway, with that rant uh, being done, I didn't necessarily uh, plan on going into that. Um, this uh, vehicle here, um, like I said, was constructed over the course of a couple of days to meet the designer's challenge that Excalibur had uh, had put up, um, building an, a uh, basically a cargo hauler SV. And so uh, this one here is called the Hauler Monkey, and it is part of my Monkey's Tool line, which is a big, big collection of, I think I'm at 25 or 30 uh, things right now. Uh, it's all tooling vehicles, a few CV pads like this one right here. The CV pad was actually... Uh, built uh, with a 9x7 grid to spawn and hold this thing. Um, so it's a big tooling line, and it's all, met, it's all about doing uh, resource allocation and gathering, logistics, uh, moving stuff around, stuff that I'm really big on. So uh, I had a basic design for what I wanted to do in this hauler, uh, basically the cargo hold in the back, four vertical liftoff, uh, takeoff thrusters on the sides. I initially did smaller ones than the ones I've got on there now. And then a cockpit up front that was raised to try and give it kind of a cool edgy shape. I didn't want something that was just a, you know, square boring rectangle. So this thing is set up, uh, let me switch out of God mode here. This thing is configured. I should have automatic ramps turned on this thing. Uh, there we go. This thing is configured with two main cargo holds in the back. And we've got left cargo hold and right cargo hold, and although they're not exactly perfect, the volumes are slightly off, somewhere towards the, the end of finishing this thing, I, I got a couple of container extension blocks wrong somewhere. So the volumes are slightly uneven, but basically each of them can hold 15,000 volume. And as an example, 
let's see, I'll find something here that I can use. Uh, the heaviest stuff that I test with is Promethium ore. Uh, this stuff is really, really, really particularly uh, heavy, and I guess it would uh, make sense if I went back into guard mode to do this. Um, this stuff is very, very heavy, and as I throw it in here, you'll be able to see that it's filling the volume up. And I might be able to, yep, I'm able to go past it since I'm in god mode. But if I weren't, it would top itself out. Uh, let's see if I can get it close to maximum here. So, uh, yeah, good enough for government work, I guess. It's only seven over. So I fill both of these guys up, then I'm carrying... Uh, what is it? I think it three, four, five, six, seven. I'm carrying 15,000 Promethium ore uh, around. Now, in the old system, that'd be easy. You just place it all in uh, one cargo box, and it, and it's done. But in something like this, this is a more challenging thing to pull off. The uh, the dry weight of the vehicle goes from I want to say 125 tons. I think is what it's at. This is on the on uh, the, uh, I think it's on a Kua, that's what I did this creative game in, so it's at 1.06 Gs. It'll go from 125 all the way up to 420, 425 tons. So the weight change um, being, what what is that, uh, 3x I think off the top of my head, the weight change uh, makes for a uh, pretty massive difference uh, on here. And it, basically you have to have this thing designed to be able to carry it uh, and lift off, you know, not to mention turn and accelerate and slow down and, you know, and uh, yaw and, you know, slip left and right and that sort of thing like that. So this, uh, this vessel has been over-designed uh, to be able to handle more of what I call worst-case scenarios. I'm a, I'm a fan of anything that I build, uh, anything that I design to be overbuilt, because it's kind of one of those things, uh, the philosophy, the, the pragmatic philosophy that I, I go by, which is, is it's better to have it and not beat it than the other way around. So if you can imagine in a uh, survival game, if you're playing this and then you spend a whole ton of mats and two hours and whatever the build time is to spawn something in that is that uh, lacks efficacy in its job. It's inefficient and it can't do what it's supposed to do even though it looks cool, you know, that kind of thing. It's That's a real bummer. It'd probably hack me off. Uh, I'm sure it would probably hack anybody else off. So this thing is laden with a lot of thrusters. Um, uh, most of them are not part of the primary group. They don't switch on um, unless manually done so. Uh, so that's for fuel consumption and fuel, uh, fuel reduction reasons. Uh, let me show you a little bit more in here um, just to give you an idea. In the control panel, the pilot can access some of these uh, settings in here. So I've got all these signals set up for all, you know, all these frills and whatever. Primary thrusters are going to be uh, primarily left and right ones and let's see let me go back outside here and I've got smaller vertical takeoffs I think these are uh, large class if I remember right uh, thruster jet mediums okay two by five by twos I've got four of these one thing just as a little side note one thing I did do when I originally designed this is I had the one by three by one thruster jets all along the underside of the uh, belly here and I really didn't like it it looked very dirty I guess and very complicated and so I wound up uh, switching to these four guys instead two on either side so those are your primary uh, liftoff thrusters and in the back we've got forward thrusters those are uh, four uh, one by three by ones and then I've got some lateral thrusters and then I've got some reverse ones as well um, I also have some vertical, uh, basically facing up thrusters that I don't really change. Um, Gravity is the big killer in weight stuff, and so there's no no reason really to add uh, thrusters that are you know to have you know tons of force applied or anything like that to those things. So so far, looking at some of the numbers, and yes, the weights and volumes thing forces you to have to pay more attention to these things. I've got uh, three and three quarter meganewton force down, or excuse me, down force, I'm sorry, um, and then one magnet in each direction in, uh, in lateral, 1.4 in the back, 1.4 in the front. So dry weight, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a pig, but this is power efficiency mode. Uh, I think I've got something like 14 RCS running on this, maybe. Uh, I'd have to go look real quick. Um, this thing is really complex. Yep, 14 primary RCS running. So... This one's a much more power efficient uh, type of uh, setup. You don't need a lot of uh, 
you don't need a lot of uh, thrust or therefore a lot of fuel to get the uh, the ship in bare form from point A to point B. Um, but once you start getting loaded up, then and I may run a uh, simulation on this here real quick. Once you start getting loaded up, you can engage the auxiliary systems. Now the aux systems, it's uh, kind of like secondary propulsion. Uh, I've got a couple of additional generators in here to support the extra load of, it looks like, eight RCS is what I settled on on here. And a pretty large variety of additional thrusters. You can tell they're all labeled too. That was really fun to do. Um, I've got a ton of extra thrusters that kick on um, as, far, as part of the uh, arcs, uh, aux things. So we've got these three additional one by three by one thruster jets for reverse. Um, I've got additional takeoff. Those are one by three by ones. I think I have three on either side. Yeah, so that's an additional uh, 350 times six. So you're looking at uh, two mega newtons of downforce on that. Uh, a little bit more of uh, lateral thrust side by side. And then in the back, I engage some of these medium sized uh, jet thrusters. These are, yeah, these are 840 each. So that's an additional 1700 out the back. Now, with the test that I did earlier with all the Prometheum on this planet and this gravity with this atmosphere, because all that, all that has an effect on the uh, um, on the uh, flight mechanics, the flight dynamics of uh, how a ship flies, um, that is still not enough. So, like I've done in several of my other ships, uh, I did this. Um, I talked about this in the Oberth CV video that I made, where I have this boosters group, and uh, basically it's a tertiary group of thrusters that are really hard hitting. We don't care about the fuel consumption; the thing just guzzles gas, you know that kind of thing. But we need it under a more extreme uh, circumstance where we're really carrying a lot of weight. So in this thing. Excuse me, like I was saying earlier, if I loaded up on Prometheum and filled up the cargo hold in there, the cargo holds, uh, left and right, I'd be carrying 15,000 Prometheum more, which is quite a bit. The It goes from 125 to 425, so it's a uh, ton, so it's increased 300 uh, tons in weight. So you need these big bad daddies on the sides to lift the ship up off the ground. And then also got these big bad boys in the back <laughs> to push it forward. And uh, there's a couple other things that I use in there, um, but that's basically it. Uh, let's see, the boosters group, let me take a look here. I'll close the aux systems out. Boosters group, um, I enable a few additional uh, generators, uh, four more RCS, because I, I, I figured by that point, you know, if you're having to kick these things on and you're carrying a massive amount of stuff, it just makes sense to get the ship a little bit more maneuverable. And the energy input on these things, the consumption rate is, is minimal. It's just a matter of finding block space inside the hull to do it. So um, on the boosters group, uh, let's see, I do that, three generators, and rear and takeoff thrusters. So that's basically it. Um, that's where the bulk of the challenge winds up uh, uh, coming in, is lifting the thing up off the ground and then propelling it forward. Uh, the rest of it kind of sort of takes care of itself. You may need to, to do a little bit of work, you know, if you're doing your own design on something like this to, for reverse thrust, but it's primarily takeoff and, uh, and forward. So anyways, um, that's the uh, propulsion uh, setup on it. Um, you probably already noticed the automatic uh, door ramp and all that stuff back here. Let's see if I can shift the time over and take some of the brightness out of this. I've got a light, I've got a couple of double doors that open up from this motion sensor. The only one thing that um, I do not like about my own build here is that your guy's head can get stuck on this motion sensor. But since I've got it widened out right there, um, uh, in here, even though this is kind of a you know a really cramped uh, hallway uh, before you get up, or a cramped cargo hold before you get up to the cockpit, it's not really that big of a deal. You just kind of skip right past it. So up here, um, I've got the uh, I call it uh, crew amenities. Um, the typical stuff. I have a pair of constructors, armor locker. I have a small additional cargo box, O2 station, a couple of fridges, that kind of thing. Now, the idea behind this design was just to strictly make a cargo hauler. I didn't want to go all in and have all this other fancy stuff on it, but I did think that it would be really convenient to be able to take a couple of buddies with you. 
Uh, so I went ahead and made room inside the cockpit for a pair of uh, crew seats, and um, they actually work even though when you sit in them you can kind of sort of see outside, but you don't get ejected outside the ship, which is kind of nice whenever you whenever you want to dismount off the seat. Same with the cockpit uh, cockpit seat as well. So the constructors and other stuff, these additional uh, cargo boxes, foot locker, whatever you want to call them, they're there to basically support that. Uh, so. Inside the rest of the ship here, as far as the internal guts of it, um, I've got 1102 tanks. Um, don't ask me what the capacity is. Let's see, uh, uh, 4,400. Um, so I guess that's going to be 4,400 pounds or whatever the uh, uh, measurement unit is. I've got 20 fuel tanks. That's actually over 10,000 fuel capacity for this thing, if I remember correctly. And uh, so this thing can support all those bigger thrusters and, you know, in a denser atmosphere and all this other nasty stuff and still be able to, to get your stuff from point A to point B. And let's see, I don't know, uh, I've already, I think I've already shown the generators. I've got several regular generators. I've got additional jennies inside the auxiliary systems and the boosters. And then I also have a backup generator group and those are stuff somewhere in the back of the ship I can't really remember so if you're inside of a dense atmosphere or higher gravity and the power consumption goes way up then you can kick those guys on and um, try to help even that out because the from what what I've, I've seen so many times uh, playing on the servers is that when you get into a really nasty world and you and you don't have enough power generation it goes into the yellow and the red and your fuel consumption is through the roof so that is there to try and help mitigate that um i've got other stuff on power groups here constructors you can flip on and off the fridges you know that kind of thing like that and a lot of this stuff is mainly for power efficiency reasons uh we want to keep um keep uh, fuel consumption down if we can. We don't have ginormous fuel tanks like in a capital vessel for this. That's part of the challenge of this. Um, being able to carry all this weight and support the thrusters and the power needed means um, you have to have a lot of generators, a lot of RCS, a whole lot of fuel tanks since there's no tier two versions of them. You know, that, that kind of thing like that. We don't have multiple grades that we can choose from. Maybe we will in the future, but we don't right now. So, and on the right, I think I've already uh, uh, shown you the uh, primary thrusters. You can switch off the automatic door ramps. Um, this kicks off the motion sensors, which turn on the interior lights and shuts off uh, all the other lights as well, really, inside. Uh, I've got collision lights. Uh, you probably already saw those outside. I've got reds on starboard and greens on port, and they blink uh, once every several seconds. I've got uh, two different groups here, uh, one for front spotlights. The, I want to make it nighttime here real quick. The front spotlights kick on and uh, make it uh, really nasty bright. And then I've also got landing lights, which I think is kind of cool. Now they're they're positioned closer towards the bottom of the uh, of the chassis, but um, once you're up in the air, they make a nice big glow. So if you're carrying all this heavy crap and you want to be careful where you land and you know park your boat then you can use those to see better below you. I just felt it kind of makes sense. It may not be a, a necessarily, you know, critical type thing, but to me it makes sense, and it seems like it's uh, beneficial. So, anywho, um, I think that is all there is to show uh, for this vessel. Again, this is the uh, Hauler Monkey. It's the first version of it. Um, I don't know if I'll do any reworking or not on it. It's uh, I've already field tested the the heck out of it uh, with uh, tons of weight and all sorts of stuff I can throw at it, and it was able to carry stuff. It didn't uh, it didn't go haywire or act weird or fall out of the sky or anything like that. So. I guess that's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I'd like to grow this channel and get some more content up there for you guys and show off some of the stuff that I build. So that's it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much and have a good one.